This guy is Rob, he is the main villain of the amazing world of Gumball But he is not the only one and not the strongest either This show is full of very interesting antagonists So today we are going to see from the most pathetic and offensive villains to the strongest ones Seeing their weaknesses and strengths to see who is the most powerful villain Talking of pathetic inoffensive creatures, Ant-1 is the weakest villain ever we see him in the episode The Receipt, where Gumball and Darwin have the experience of committing first degree murder in a traumatic event. But it's all good, because Anton is like nothing had happened the next day. The boys are left quite confused, so they do the most logical thing. And that's entering into a killing streak to get the Call of Duty drone, I guess? Soon they discover how Anton is made. So Gumball and Darwin proceed to create Anton several times with a toaster. It is here where Ant-1 is born, which was overcooked. Since they decide to throw him away, he becomes a psychotic, seeking revenge by leading the totally useless army of Antons to fulfill his goal. I'm not your dad, I'm just a dude, and Darwin would make a terrible mother cause he's just a dude. Ant-1 is at the lowest since it does not represent a very big threat or a threat at all, <laughs> as we see in this episode. He's more intelligent than a normal piece of bread, but there's not much he can do. We move on to Frankie Watterson, who's Richard's father, and who left him when he went out to buy milk and never came back. Because imagine having a happy, functional family. That would be weird. We see him for the first time in the episode The Signature, where after Richard finds out that his mom and Louis are getting married, he finesses him to be his adopted son. Louis does the same with Nicole, which leads a family tree more complicated than an Alabama home. Turns out sharing a room with a very old man isn't nearly as much fun as I thought it would be. The only solution is to find Frankie, but he ends up almost still in their house. He is a dirty rat. I mean, in both ways. The truth is that he does not have any notable quality, although he can be very manipulative. But other than that, he doesn't have anything special. If he's here, it's because I would guess he's stronger than a piece of burnt bread. This fingerprint is a character we have seen a couple times in the show. Who you know is hustling, constantly trying to make a quick dollar. Just like your favorite YouTubers, <laughs> selling you sh**. <laughs> Truly masters of theft. We can see him shine in the episode called The Spoon, where with his rise and grind mentality, he is robbing Larry with a spoon. I mean, to be fair, it is actually a very lethal weapon, since almost every cop in Elmer's foot. So he, besides having a sick weapon, he can hide somewhat easily. But he seems to have the characteristics of a normal person. The copycats are the antagonists of the episode of the same name. They are the Warzone's ripoff. We see how they imitate or copy everyone's actions. There are four members who are Chichi, Rabbit, Dad, and Mom. There is no NAs. It looks like they hate women just as much as the rest of us. The women no right to celebrate in Republic of People. <laughs> they are higher than the previous ones, despite not being so special or not having strength greater than average. Except for Mom, she's as strong as Nicole, which is honestly hot. I mean, surprising. They seem to have a kind of omnipresence, since they can be precisely anywhere where the Watersons are, so they can copy what they do. But they are destroyed easily for his lack of a member. You guys good? Mrs. Robinson is Mr. Robinson's wife. We have seen her in many episodes, being the antagonist of the episode The Wicked, where we see how twisted, sadistic, and perverse this old p*** oh. is. She is a sociopathic menace who commits malevolent acts of violence simply because she finds pleasure in them. She doesn't have a tortured past, nor does she have a clear motive. There's no empathy for anyone or anything. She walks around causing chaos all over Elmore, being literally evil personified, smiling while looking at the child choking. She is truly evil. Or maybe she's just lacking her cheeks being clapped. Or I don't know. <laughs> Despite being the evil in person, she doesn't have any kind of powers. More than almost every time getting away with it. And yeah, being quite resistant since she survived a crash, an explosion, and also being crossed by an ambulance. Miss Simon can be seen in a good amount of episodes. I'm sure we all are aware of her and her disgusting attitude. Unlike Margaret Robinson, she does have special characteristics, since she is an ape. 
which allows her to be a little faster and a little stronger. About some disadvantages, we could say she's a little knocky, as we have seen in so many episodes. She has anger issues, but this could be menopause symptoms, as she's like 500 years old. He's one of the many different characters we can see at Elmore School. Shaped like a bomb, his name is Oppenheimer Jr. This is a great humanoid bomb that is among the young criminals since he's always in detention. Someone please call the police! If we take a look at his powers or abilities, there isn't really much to highlight since he is really skinny, but maybe he has a little more strength than average. But what makes him special is that when he is very angry, he explodes which could really hurt someone. And don't worry, he's not deleting himself since his head becomes smaller, which leaves him immobilized and you would guess his head would grow normal again. So because this ability, he deserves to be a little higher than the others on the list. Now we are getting somewhere with this dinosaur, specifically a T-Rex. Finally someone who intimidates more than a grumpy puppet old bitch. We see her as an antagonist several times and has all the characteristics that a T-Rex would have, which would be a lot of strength, considerable speed, in addition to be quite imposing. Besides that, she can be quite resistant, but it was an easy job for Nicole. But she's just in another level. We meet Mr. Chanax in the episode The Boss. This would be the owner of the company called Chanax, where Rocky begins to work act, as he doesn't want to be a disappointment to his father. Something I can relate with, since having a son who uploads videos of cartoons isn't necessarily the best thing to be proud of. <laughs> kind of soulless, actually. Ah, my Rocky finally became a man. Mr. Chanax feeds of the spirits of his employees, so his main power would be to put his employees in a trance or take their souls, so they are practically zombies. Very interesting, but there is a big disadvantage in this, since he cannot control everyone with his power, he can only do it with anyone who signs the contract of his company. Plus, he's just a piece of paper, weak, but he can give you the deadliest cuts. We saw the puppets in the episode of the same name, and we already talked about them on the channel. For those who don't know, in this sweet and sexy video about the most powerful object in Gumball, you should definitely go watch after this video. The puppets have the power to come alive if they are used by someone, in addition to control the water after a certain time of use. Like a recreational drug, they have the ability to take the water to their own dimension, where Gumball and Darwin were severely bullied. All of this sounds like a quite interesting combination of powers, but the big disadvantage is that if no one is using them, they are basically useless. That takes away enough points to be higher on the list. Willan is a flying green eyeball that declares himself as Gumball and Darwin's enemy in the episode The Voice. After this very offensive and humiliating situation they put him through. The blocking of Facebook. He does give creepy vibes, but he possesses really powerful psionic abilities that can destroy everything around him. With his telekinesis, he can manipulate the physical aspects of reality with enough force to shatter concrete, cause explosions, or lift heavy objects. Unfortunately, psychic powers are the only way he can operate. He was very angry at the boys because they were ignoring him, but he didn't realize he doesn't have a mouth to speak. They never hear him. Apologize enough. Wow, it took him a while to realize he cannot speak to people. Ocho is one of Gumball's and Darwin's classmates at school. We can also see him in several episodes of the show. In one of those episodes, Gumball is talking to him <laughs> and listen this. Terry made a bet with Masami thinking Gumball is gay. <laughs> Which he kinda is, not gonna lie. Ocho is kind of an 8 bit alien spider who is a total psycho, completely out of his mind. His own parents have to lock their bedroom door to feel safe at night. It's a funny prank, right? <laughs> He has some interesting abilities, since first, he easily defeated Oppenheimer, he shoots a pixelator laser that can disintegrate or turn into cubes whatever it touches, which is very overpowered, apart from being more angry and intense than an ugly girlfriend. As a disadvantage, you can deflect the laser to hit him, and also apparently if you challenge him, you will get 3 extra lives, which can mean more opportunities to defeat him. How convenient. Another one with really destructive potential is Bobert, 
who would be kinda like a short tesla robot on steroids. The same as the previous one is another classmate too. We can see Bobert as antagonist in the episode called The Robots, where he's taking over Gumball's identity and replacing him, just like ChatGPT is doing with all of us in the next few years. Which one is the real Gumball? Here we observe most of his abilities, since he is quite resistant, he hits like a drone dad, and he can also shoot lasers through his eyes, plus in the episode called The Upgrade, as you can see he can fly. But that doesn't stop there, since he can also transform into a sort of combat mode where Bobber becomes so disproportionately jacked that he looks just as terrible as fitness influencers. The bad thing is that water is his weakness. The internet can be seen in the episode of the same name, and it's kinda like a living computer, with the same personality of a Twitter user, you know, living in his mother's basement, being a jerk and thinking there are no real consequences, but if you ever confront him in real life, he's basically a bitch, he can control the entire internet, he can make mad viral embarrassing stuff of yours, which we all know is a worse fate than that. He also has the power to be able to control almost any electrical thing that if you ever played Watch Dogs, we know it's pretty OP. With this disgusting poop looking creature, we enter the top 5. Kenneth would be the creation of Gumball by putting in a jar a mixture of papers with snot, pigeon's poop, fluff from Richard's label, and also his vomit, regurgitated milk, I would say both kind. Then they put that jar in the microwave, which is basically what I think Sam's leg eats to bulk. That disgusting combination gives life to Kenneth. His main power is that the more he eats, the more he grows. If we assume that he has no growth limit, I believe it gives him a massive advantage, since as we saw in the episode called the finale, just by eating a couple big things, he puts himself at the level of Hector. He will be practically unstoppable. Now we are talking of one of the most powerful and sexist, I mean strongest villains. Yuki Yoshida or Masami's mom can be seen in the episode called The Fury, where she was literally bullying one of the strongest characters of the show, Nicole Watterson. She proved to be at the same level of Nicole in her anime form. She absolutely has superior physical capabilities than any other villain of the show. She can throw energy bolts that Dragon Ball would shamelessly steal like 20 years prior. You might say that Rob deserves to be in the first place of the most powerful villains. And well, if we talk about villains, villains, yeah, I would also put him in the first place, since he was the only constant antagonist of the show. Rob, like a good villain, has a tortured past. He was taken into the void since he was not relevant, and by wanting to escape from this place, he became what we saw from then on. Besides that, some of the most powerful objects in the show have passed through his hand, such as the Universal Remote and also Barbara's Brush, but that would be the main problem Rob has. Without those objects, he is just a resentful loser. His terrifying monster is the Evil Turtle. It was bought from the awesome store, so with that alone, we already know how P is gonna be. First of all, it is quite fast and strong to be a turtle, as well as dangerous. Bite, bite. Eat food for strength to bite, bite, bite. Make little turtles to bite even more. It is basically indestructible, since we can see it destroys a car upon contact. It also survives an explosion and fire without a scratch. And if that weren't enough, this turtle legs sex that look like Shrek testicles. <laughs> Shrek is love. And his babies are equally or more dangerous than the turtle, since in the episode The Nest, they endangered the entire city, turning Elmore into a post apocalyptic dumpster. And same as Kenneth, he can grow as he eats. <laughs> Any Having an army of demonic turtles, plus being practically immortal, this every turtle is almost the strongest villain, but it's not top one, because the most powerful villain of the amazing world of Gumball is the Void. The Void is a secret dimension, or as we talked about in other video, is an entity that rules the world, it decides what happens inside Elmore, and has complete control over almost everything, and uses these things that is like a glitch to modify or erase whatever it wants. There are no limits. But if you want to see what is the most powerful object of Gumball, check out this video. Thanks for watching.